My name is John Rennie Short and I'm Professor of Public Policy here at the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. Uh, the title of the book is Korea, a Cartographic History. And it's really a history of Korea as examined through its maps, made both by Koreans and non-Koreans, uh, from around 1400 up to the present day. Korean cartography uh, is very distinctive in having this combination of rivers and mountains shown that, so that the landscape looks as if it's alive. Uh, it has a, a number of reasons behind it, but there's a palpable vitality to many of these Korean maps. The uh, Korea Foundation uh, gave a very generous grant to the University of Chicago Press so they could do full four-color printing. So it's a, it's, um, um, it's a very beautiful book. It's meant for essentially English speakers um, to give them an introduction to Korea, which is by and large, its old name was called the Hermit Kingdom. It's relatively not well known in the West in particular, unlike even say China or Japan. So it was a way to introduce the country and its history to a much broader and wider English speaking audience. There's a number of uh, contemporary cartographic controversies. Um, one is the what would you call the sea to the east of Korea. Uh, there's a problem in the naming of it. So Japanese maps of the region call it the Sea of Japan, as do many other maps. Uh, for Korea, it's always been Donghae or East Sea. So increasingly, you'll see not only Korean maps, but also some other non-Korean maps will use either East Sea or will use the double nomenclature of East Sea, Sea of Japan. So this is obviously still a very... Um, tricky um, problem for, for Korean-Japanese relations, as is another one, and that is the issue of Dok To, which is a set of islands between Japan and Korea. Korea has long claimed them. Uh, Japan took them over uh, when they colonized uh, Korea, and currently uh, they're in Korean hands, but the Japanese, they call it uh, uh, Takashima, and they regularly uh, put out ownership claims to the islands. And so you can see these controversies reflected in the different maps of the same region by Korea, uh, by Japan, and sometimes by other countries. My work is really about trying to make the complex simple. Many academics write to make the simple complex, and my main goal is to enlighten and encourage and humor people in the sense of I try to make the world understandable to people in a very accessible manner. As an undergraduate and graduate student I was a geographer which is by definition almost interdisciplinary and I've retained that, that breadth um, so I have interest in looking at contemporary urban issues, I've written a lot about globalization in cities, environmental concerns and also history of cartography. So I've kept that interdisciplinarity as a, it's the only way I know to sort of understand the complexity of the world and also it keeps my research and writing fresh. I feel after a year of working with something I'd like to change focus so interdisciplinarity is also a way to uh, sample different um, uh, research methods and different research topics while still keeping it fresh and alive.